for today, Australian Detailing Podcast. That was it. One, two, three, four, five. Aren't you supposed to be like making sure uh, my makeup is right or something? Isn't that what you do? Old days. days? Dude, that's awesome. Look at that. I'm very talented. I just yeah, put the fingers up because if you do like this, you can just. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite clipboard, dude. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see the things I get impressed with? And with the that's it. To think. I thought you were this, cool before. <laughs> oh, the important things that you're gonna. <laughs> I, I think you're good there, aren't you? I'm just good gonna there. grab your face. Good there. Yep, we've, we've locked in your face. If I keep moving on you. What do you think, Larry? Tracking. Yep. Oh boy, you can really smell that polish. Has anyone seen that clipboard? <laughs> awesome, thanks. He's, dude. he's flinging it around. I should have probably thought about some, you know, quite exciting introduction for you. We can do one. I can jump in your arms. How do you explain? How do you explain Larry Casilla? Who is Larry Casilla? That's what I'll say. Oh boy, that's a good one. <laughs> Let's go deep. Um, all right, so you're good there. Yep, it's got your face. We got sound. We got sound. We've been waiting for you guys. Come on. <laughs> all right. Alrighty. Welcome to the Australian Detailing Professionals Podcast, the premier destination for expert advice from Australia's leading detailers and aftermarket professionals. Talking auto to marine and everything in between. Here's your host, Alex Schrader. Hi everybody, Alex here from Australian Detailing Professionals and today I'm with Larry Cosilla and we are at the Sydney Harbour Concours Correct. de Elegant. Yes. Is that right? Is de, that, yes, is de Elegant. De Elegant. De Elegant. De Elegant. So you gotta let it flow okay. a little right. bit there, okay. yes. Okay. Right. Hungry and, on like Cockatoo that. Island. <laughs> Cockatoo Island, yes. of course. Very easy to get to by car, as you can imagine. <laughs> exactly, yes, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Thanks so much for being no, here. No worries, happy to be here. Flat out, turns out I haven't been messaging you, I've been messaging your PA because yeah. you're such a celebrity. Yeah, yeah you know, right. Uh, this guy we've just, just been up. flat out, we've been shooting so many videos here, it's been an absolute blast. I've been tired watching your stories, man. How are you feeling? I'm exhausted. We've been doing one to two videos a day. Yep. Six hours sleep, which is what it is. Get back in. In, doing a car, come back out, Instagram, but you know, launching, uh, you know, a brand yes. uh, in Australia is a big deal. Now we had 846 requests for distribution globally. Wow! Right. And we've picked Stash because the, I mean, you know, when you walk in and you feel the room and you talk to people and you're like, immediately gut feeling, this yep. is the right place to be. These guys are, be, oh, these guys would be good. That, they're just the right people and you can't define it. It's like saying, hey, how, do you, how did you know that your wife was the right person? It's not because her hair and she's pretty or that all those things are great. I've got to cut Undefinable. you off. I've got to cut you off. I can go for days. I know, you're going to go I can for, go for days. days. You've gone to number 99 here, right? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Never mind. But I'm just going to keep going with yeah. that. So my question was, why Australia out of all of the world? Couple reasons. The first one, just from a business perspective, Australia yep. is higher than the United States in terms of its ethical, um, uh, business right you guys are just you do what you say you say what you do kind of thing mm -hmm. and that was a big deal so I have a lot of requests from um, countries around like kind of like in terms of their ranking that United States ranks the quality of business mm -hmm. of other countries mm -hmm. um, and literally the Australia is number one Norway right. and Australia yes. and so I said all right I want to focus on that so that was the first kind of um, non-emotional like businessy kind of thing and the yes. second one was I need to find the right people mm -hmm. and we've had a lot of requests of a lot of countries that could work, yes. but I haven't found the right people. Right. So it's the two things that, that matter the most. And when I met Stash, uh, Josh, Scotty, um, Brody, who's the detailer here. So how did you meet Stash? How did that come about? They contacted us, yes. and ironically yeah. enough, like you just hundred uh, there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and okay. just like you said before, when we just yeah. started, um, we ignored their email. Yeah. Right. Um, and I said, okay, if they really want it, they'll, they'll email back. But I wasn't kind of You'll like thinking that way. Kind uh, of yeah. yeah. So um, then they sent another one to Jordan, and. Yeah. Um, they really uh, explained everything that they were doing. Yep. And then I got on the call, we talked to them. And like I was alluding to before, mm. you know when you can look at somebody and you go like, 
we just imprinted. Yes. And so I said, we're going to make this work. Yeah. So awesome. that's why we're here. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Yeah. I'm going to go back up the list just quickly. Yeah, where, yeah. Do, where do we even go here? I don't know. I don't know. Um, we've got limited I'm going to take you crazy places yeah. right now. <laughs> awesome, I love it. Um, look, just where you started, for the people that don't know you, sure. and there are two or three in the world, um, <laughs> let's, let's tell them about you. Um, so I started in 2011 is when ammo brands started. Now I've been yep. detailing prior to that in the, early, the late 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, but once I left college, and you know, you're supposed to go to when you go to fancy schools, mm -hmm. uh, you're supposed to do fancy job: lawyer, yep. doctor, accountant, uh, broker. So I went and yes. did um, uh, natural gas commodities on the New York Mercantile Exchange right. uh, back when that existed. Yep. Um, that's showing my age. But uh, I did that, and I absolutely hated it. And okay. the interesting part is it's really hard to get into that business. So when I left, mm. um, it was kind of not controversial, but like, why would you want to leave this? Yes. Oh, you're going to leave this to go detail a car? And yeah. I was like, yes, that's what I want to do. And back then, there wasn't podcasts, there wasn't cameras, there wasn't YouTube. There wa it wasn't a big thing, right? Yes. And so fast forward, um, I left. I worked for a museum that curated cars, and we, our job was to go out and, and deliver cars to movies and photo shoots and things, and I cleaned the cars before they went out there. I just thought it was the, the bee's knees. It was just amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, fast forward, I bought a car wash with the money that I made on the stock market yep. um, and built that up into being like a destination. Like, because people love when we're cleaning a car. It's like people, as soon as you start a polisher, they just like, Wah, you know, I mean, like a dog whistle, right? Yep, yep. So I started doing that. Fast forward again a couple of years, mm. somebody came in and said, "Hey, you're you're you know one of the biggest polishers out there. You know you know you know how to you're you're the man or whatever." I said, "Oh, cool." This is prior to YouTube, mm. and uh, they said, "Try this product." I mm. never forget that moment. And I was like, "Okay, show me how to use it." And they're like, "Well, you know how to polish." Yes. And I said, "Well, yeah, I know how to polish, but I don't know how to polish with your stuff." Again, fast forward two three years. I consulted for that group and said, hey, you need more I'm making this up, lubrication or less abrasive or whatever the case was for that particular thing. Yes. Um, and then I started working with the chemist. Right. Because the interesting thing about detailing mm -hmm. is the people who, and this is why Ammo started, um, the, the people who make tend to make the products mm -hmm. don't actually use the products. Mm -hmm. So there was a disconnect between manufacturing a product that on million dollar car mm -hmm. and the actual uh, execution of the product. So I came in and I was the liaison between the chemist and like, hey, does this actually work? Mm -hmm. And so I worked with him for a couple of years and I learned how to bake the cake, as we call it. There's yes. formula. So I have stacks of these formulas that I made and failed. Yeah. Um, and then that man, who was a wonderful man, retired. Yeah. And so the company that at that point I was making large volume for car washes and stuff, I see. not 16 ounces, he retired and I, the, the CEO was like, ah. I don't know what to do right now. And I was like, I've been watching this for like four years. I know how to make the products. Yes. So I ended up making the products. I'm almost done. Yeah, you're and right. Then, <laughs> and then I told, I told you, Americans, we yeah, talk yeah, forever. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I said, hey, why don't we put them in 16 ounce bottles so yep. people at home can use them. We were selling 55 gallon drum, big drums and totes for right. car washes. Okay. No, you're never going to compete with that. You're never going to compete with Meguiar's and this and that. And I was like, there's this thing called YouTube. Mm. And I remember the guy I was talking to and he's like, I don't know what that is. Whatever, and then, so the rest is history. I left to go do the YouTube thing. I said, hey, I'm gonna make my own product uh, with my own formulas, yep. um, and then I'm going to show people how to use it because I couldn't find anything. Back then we'd have forums, and you have to read like 5,000 pages of notes, and I'm like, I don't, I need to see you doing the thing. Yes. This is a visual, of exercise course. yes so from there the rest is history yes yeah amazing um yeah. i'm going to jump all over the shop because i don't want to forget this but any tips for guys starting out on youtube for example like you built i want to explain 2.1 million followers 2.2 2.2 come on come on come on come on come on uh 2.2 yeah uh i mean your content's not only uh i mean you cover a lot of ground you're yeah. highly technical but but it's good we have some fun day. we have some technical yeah, i have a, a studio yeah. channel which is yep. the second tier channel yes um i don't even know 70 or 100 000, whatever it is followers yeah. there yeah, and yeah. that's the more hardcore folks that like we do behind the scenes we talk like really technical yeah so the interesting thing about youtube is you get really technical now yes it, you start to lose subscribers so yes. when i first started it was all how to finds, right yeah the, everything everyone wants the barn finds yeah. everybody wants yeah. the um I saw that D disaster disgusting cars mm. that kind of thing mm. so are you YouTube, torn with that like you, like do you really want to be like you know what i mean like it's yeah it, where, it, where do you go right so that is the challenge that's a good mm. question that's the challenge now with youtube to figure out hey is this what i want to do or yes. do I'm, am i chasing views yes and so yes. you know you have those moments yeah. i don't really have those moments anymore i yeah. do what i want to do on youtube if awesome. people want to watch it great and i don't mean that as like a tough guy yep. it's like Yep. You do have those moments where you're like, what, what am I doing this for? Yeah. Just trying to chase the views. Yep. And in, in previous years, YouTube used to generate a lot of ad revenue. 
mm. you don't generate mm. ad revenue anymore. It mm. doesn't work that way. So like these are real labors of love. Yes. Or there's a customer that I'm actually doing a car for, and he's like, I say, hey, can I put this on? You know, for my. He's like, absolutely, no problem. And yeah. there's some that are like, dude, I, I don't care about your YouTube. I just need you to clean this car. Like, no yeah. problem, sir. Whatever. Yeah. So now I'm going back towards that a little bit more because how many yeah. barn finds can you do? How many disaster vehicles that can you do? But yes. I could talk for hours about how YouTube has changed in its yeah. algorithm, but long and short is, in the past, it was a lot of how-to, Yes. and there was nobody on YouTube when I started. Yep. Now, there's so many people mm. doing the same thing. The algorithm doesn't like that. Algorithm likes money, yep. meaning um, the price of this, the price of that, yep. um, uh, negativity, mm. and controversy. Mm. And that's how, just like newscasts, you know, yeah. what's, gonna, what's gonna make somebody go like, oh, I wanna click on that. Yes. So it's kind of a little bit against uh, how I originally started, which was like, I just want to help people do that and do it in an exciting way. Yes. And now, you know, I can do an amazing video and it'll get 10,000 views, where yeah. 10 years ago you do that, it would get 10 million views. Yeah. So, I, you just got to roll with the punches. So, so what would you, could you give a key takeaway to, you know, new detailers trying to get... Trying to get on YouTube? Yeah, and get yeah, some followers. You, like, I think, I mean, I guess the best piece of advice mm. is to continually post. Um, yes. So consistency is big. Yep. Um, but, if you wanted to make money on that, I think it's a terrible idea. Yeah, have a bigger picture. Have anymore. a bigger picture. If you yeah. want to do it because you're having a blast and it's fun, and yes. there's, you know all the cameras and all the stuff, and like, yeah. there's like a yeah. whole other business here. It if you, if you like it, I see you sweating. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, a lot of humidity. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's a lot of stuff to keep track of. If you're into yeah. that, then I encourage you to do that. If you yeah, think great. you're going to make money on YouTube mm. detailing, I would say. In terms of return on your investment, that's mm. probably not a wise decision. Yeah, awesome. So, but I'm also not trying to tell people, discourage anybody from doing anything. Do it, rock on. But it's yeah. not as good as it was years ago. I'll yes. say that. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I'm just uh, feeling like I need to get to the punch here with time. No, no, you, you're uh, good. You got uh, 40 minutes. I'd love to talk about your products. Obviously, that's what you're here sure. for. Um, Let's talk about um, the range of products you've brought out here. I'm assuming, is everything available here? Everything. Everything's available? Yeah, is except it, the uh, steam machine. Those and are this is heavy. anything, particularly after your content, is there anything you see Australians particularly liking or, or wanting to buy? You know what is or? fascinating? That's a great question. The US coatings are incredibly popular for yeah. DIY, for guys right. in the driveway. And we design products because there's very technical ones. There's ones that are promise you the world and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And then there's you know, ones that are more uh, user friendly. Yes. So we tend to be more user friendly because we want, we want to encourage people to detail it themselves, to feel the therapy, to, you yes. know, we're different than just like pumping out products, right? Yep. Totally makes sense. Here in Australian market, mm -hmm. I mean, people know about coatings, but they immediately go, uh, no, we have professionals do it. Mm -hmm. So they'll buy the coating from a professional detailer. Yep. The point being, they won't buy it to do it themselves. So we're seeing the waxes which I am, I'm a big fan of wax. Mm -hmm. Waxes are flying off the shelf. Yeah, right, But, wow. but the coatings cool. aren't because they're like, wait a second, oh. we thought that this is gonna be more complicated. That's so right now it's an educational thing. I have to educate them like, no, you can do it. Let me show you how to do it. Yeah. If you want that long-term protection. Having said all that, yes. I'm a huge fan of wax. Right. So right. we have a new line of waxes coming out. I, I need the Zen moment, like in your in your, in your garage, just to like wax and to kind of like relax Tell us and chill. Human. Like coating wax, why? Like why does it turn you on more than uh, coating? Why is it what? turning what? Why does it turn you on more than a coating? Like why? Are you uh, looking because for it's it's, it's easier to put on. Yeah, it smells just, better when I'm putting on the coating. I have to have yes a mask and yes. stuff. It is. Listen, you're good to see you do that compounding, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it, really yeah. I, I've seen mm. older detailers that are like uh, mm. my mentors. Yes, uh, they silicosis, uh, silicosis and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So it's not a good look. Mm. You should always wear that on. So when you're putting yeah. on a coating, they're pretty strong. There's solvents in there to obviously evaporate, so on and so forth. Yes. The point to answer your question: yeah. When I put on a wax, you got the music going, you got the TV going, you're just kind of chilling, and you're 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 out. You're out, it takes a couple of minutes or half an hour. You can make it seven hours, you can make it 10 minutes. It doesn't matter. It's like there's no, you're just yeah. having fun. Yes. So to me, that's that's the joy of detailing a car. Not everything needs to be like, I need to take off you know, three microns and make it razor flat. Yes. I encourage people to not do that. That's why they put orange peel in cars on purpose. Yes, it's got dripped on. Oh yeah, no, no we've from? moved the car like oh, 15 good. times because <laughs> it's raining out. Yeah, yeah, it's right. coming right down. It's right on top yeah. of me. Yeah. I'll just shift this way maybe a foot. <laughs> that was great, thank you. Um, yeah. So, I'm just going to skip over there. Journey is significant. Uh, okay, it is still dripping on me. I'm going to go next. this way. <laughs> I think I'm still in shot. Yeah, you're in shot. What? That's fine. There you go. Here we go. Uh, what have been some of the most challenging aspects of developing the ammo brand and products, and how did you overcome them? That's a very good question. I, the number one 
I would say most challenging, there's a lot of them, is mm. the technical side from like a legal liability perspective. Yeah, right. What I mean by that is, in the United States particularly, we have lots of laws. Yes. Um, the Poison Prevention Act, I can go through 50 of them. Yep. And all of the laws have different rules and regulations, and some of them cross, and some of them don't. So right. you have to understand um, when one rule applies versus when one rule doesn't, yep. it kicks you into another one. It's an incredibly complicated spreadsheet. Wow. And so when I'm developing a product, there are times where I develop them around the rules so that I can then get the, the most out of the product. Let me give you an example. So like, I can make an unbelievable um, one step, you know, pre pre uh, white before you put on a coating. Yes. That's very high and high, very volatile. Yes. But it's also flammable, so mm. then I can't sell it. Mm. So you could probably do that for yeah. It's all. Sorry, as long as it's not a bird, I'm happy. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> it's, def it's definitely not. It. We we've been, I've, I've gotten hit all the whole day doing this car. I don't want to be that lucky right now. No, 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 no it's not a bird. Um, yeah. It's water. So. Yeah. But putting the label on the product, as unsexy as that is, probably on this podcast, it's yes. like it just is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I get uh, a lot of uh, a lot of lawyers and a lot of people looking at the labels. So I'm very proud of the labels because that is real. And if yes. you look at some products, I'll give you. I'll end on this one. I went and I looked at. Um, I don't think anyone's a competitor. I just don't. My brain doesn't focus yeah. that way. It's just another brand. Yes. And on the back of their label, I, God willing, they don't do this anymore just for their sake and the yeah. sake of the people using it. Mm. It says, warning, uh, we'll make your car too shiny. <laughs> do you understand how many federal laws that breaks? It's like, I, put, I, I had it and I went like this and I like wiped, I didn't want my fingerprints on it and I put it back on the shelf and I was like, ah, I don't want anybody, that, you can't do that. That's right. like, when you have warning, there is some serious like California poison. It, yes. There's a lot of things like Prop 65, like you, you, you gotta be careful there. So I would say that was my biggest hurdle because yeah. the, the rules and the regulations you have to go through to make it so that I can sell it yeah. is if you, if you wanna have a brand and integrity and authenticity, yes. it's like an annoying amount of work to be able to, to say that you know you've done it right versus yeah. just like slap a label on it and sell it. Yeah, yeah. That, I would say that is the hardest part. Did you have any particular issues coming to Oz with uh, any products? Any Interesting you said that, yes. There, um, Australia has a lot of consumer protection laws, yes, right. so we had to fill out a lot of paper. Luckily, because I had done the work previously yeah. with all of the SDSs, safety data sheets, and all of that, yeah. uh, we, were ma we, we managed to be able to, to get through that pretty quickly. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah great, okay, excellent. Um, no, you're losing your seat. <laughs> That's right. Cheers. Wave to the people. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, no worries. We'll pay you later. That was beautiful. Yeah. All good. Sorry. Um, no worries. What, what's the most um, challenging detailing project you've worked on throughout your whole career? Does one come to mind? Yeah, I would say right now because uh, I would say the airplane that I did, you remember that airplane episode where it was like a trashed airplane and we cleaned all of it? Okay. It was challenging and hard and all and so on and so forth. The yeah. reason it was, I'm naming it the worst one yeah. is because afterwards, I didn't factor all these things out. I had my mask on, I had you know, my white suit on, the, the whole thing, right? Yep. And so I was being as cautious as I could. However, yeah. because an airplane is designed to keep air, you know, the, you're floating in the air, yes. it's a very um, tight little chamber that's airtight, right? Right. And so as I was steaming a lot of the bird poo and the fecal matter, <laughs> um, I didn't realize that when I'm doing it in a car or somewhere else, it's vaporized, you know, it goes up in the air and you're, you can, <laughs> You have space, yeah. but when I'm in that tight area, yeah. I was breathing in a lot of um, mouse feces, mm. and I became incredibly ill. Did you? Uh, yeah. So that's wow. why it was the hardest one. Not hard polishing, not hard cleaning. Yeah. It was because it's cramped, and I'm the bigger guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, fine. They're all like that. Yeah. But I had never, ever gotten as sick yeah. as that. I had to go to the hospital, and then listen, the doctor yeah. goes like this. <laughs> the doctor goes, <clears throat> I know this is gonna sound crazy. I just got to go through my list. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. He's like, uh, are you moving? And I was like, uh, no. Uh, are you doing construction at your house? So I was like, no, weird. He's like, uh, have you, have, did you put anything in your attic? I'm like, where are you going with this? No. And he's like, did you happen to be anywhere near mice? And I'm like, no. And I was like, oh, wait a second. My job, I had to clean a bunch of stuff out. And he's like, oh. He's like, I've been racking my brain and like terrified to like accuse you of like eating a mouse or something like that. <laughs> so and I explained the situation. He's like, yeah. yeah, you got fecal matter in your lungs. Wow. And he named this thing, it was, I forget, I'm not a doctor, streptococcus, mm. like yeah. this crazy wacky name. And he's like, yeah you basically, like food poison, right? You got like lung poison yeah. from ingesting 
the oh. vaporized fecal matter. Yeah, great. That That's would be fun. the worst one. Yeah, <laughs> That's bad. It was bad. One. I was wiped out. Most challenging, uh, yeah. yeah, not dying while yeah, you're working. That's, That's a good one. Yeah, uh, or a terrible one, yes. Uh, okay, uh, look, we, we, we talked about misconceptions, uh, if you want to touch on that. Sure. Um, you had an answer that's different to what most people say. I, I, I'd be interested. Do you um, remember what I said? I, I think it was um, the, the detailers are just car washes. You had help with this one, right? <laughs> I was just quizzing you, that's it was, all. It was something yeah, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, <laughs> most misconceptions are, and this is why I started the company and why I have what, you know a chip on my shoulder, yeah. just so to speak, a good one I liked it, yeah. is um, it's the concept of throwing the keys. Mm. So when I left Wall Street, so on and so forth, you're Mr. Mm. Big shot or whatever, and I said, hey, I'm gonna go clean cars because that's where I feel like my heart is, and so on. Mm -hmm. The people that I worked for worked with, meaning we were colleagues. As soon as I left, ironically, I met, you know, because we all lived in the same area, mm -hmm. they threw the keys to me literally, mm -hmm. and I took it as a literal and metaphorical, you're now beneath me. Mm -hmm. And so, why am I telling you that story? I'm telling you that story because I think, at least in the United States, there is this uh, misconception that a detailer is someone with a bucket and soap and a, and a wash mitt. And yeah. that disappoints me, but also irritates and angers me. Like, no, like I've chosen to do this. Yes. I'm also educated, just like you. I've just chosen not to sit behind a desk and move things around the screen to make... Mm. I think it's similar. Here. Right, mm. so I'm, my mission, certainly why I started Ammo, for multiple reasons, one of them was I wanted to show that we're tech, like, do you want do you want just a regular guy working on this million dollar car? Exactly. Or do you want someone who actually knows what they're doing, has been trained and so on and so forth? So Yes. Yep. That that would be the biggest misconception that we're not just like a bunch of dudes with a wash bucket. Like yes. we actually study and train and practice and purposely burn through panels on a test panel and like there's chemistry a lot of and, chemistry. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I was doing in the in mm. the in the stash talk when we were mm. doing this um, right. behind the scenes. They're like, what's the number one thing? I was like, if you don't know the chemistry and the pH scale and mm. low and high and alkaline and base and so on, and yep. like that, how do you know how to clean something? Yes. So I'm yep. I really want to bring that level up. Yes. We're there. I'm saying, I mean the detailers, they're they're there. They're all we're all getting there. Yes. I'm saying the perception of the public yep. to be like, oh, because if you go in different countries like Norway and I talked to my buddies Jason Rose who travels a lot, yep. Detailers are considered like body shop guys. Mm. Where you know, like, I don't know about here, but in the US, body shop guys, you know, they're, oh, cool, all right. It's, mm. I, I wouldn't know how to do that. Mm. But because you can pull somebody in who washes cars in, in the driveway, mm. they immediately feel, which is good and bad, um, that they can do exactly. And so that's the mis like, I, no one's ever been like, oh, yeah, I've done some brain surgery on the weekend. Yes. Or, you know, I've body shop, you know, I painted my car in the drive. It's a little bit of a stretch, right? Yes. So yeah. that's the, that's the one that I would love to bring the knowledge up on. Fantastic, yeah. excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, beyond detailing, can you share some of your personal hobbies, what you get into, what, what's your Sure, thing? I am crazy about hockey. I play a lot of ice hockey. Okay. Um, so I did that for my entire life. So I play two to three times. It used to be four to five times, but the rink is being crazy. Yep. Um, and I have a good group of guys that we, uh, we're just the same group of guys we play every weekend, like 6 a.m., you know, and we yes. play for an hour and a half, come back, and then I'm on daddy duty or whatever. Yep. And then baseball. My son is a big baseball uh, player. He's fantastic. He's a lefty. Yep. Um, and I'm his baseball coach for uh, the travel team, which in the States is a very, very big deal. Apparently here, nobody plays baseball, which was... Not really. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, like, baseball, what? Uh, you know, yeah. they play cricket, or I'm trying to learn yeah, the rules the of that one. The cricket's the competitor. Yeah, 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 the money's already there. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. footy with the... I, I grabbed that football, that whatever that thing is, and yep. I threw it like a football. They're like, no, 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 I'll throw it like them. Yes, yes. So I'm trying to figure all that stuff out. But yeah, I would say hockey and baseball, just sports in general is my... Uh, yeah, fantastic. You know. um, I'm going all over the shop here for anyone who's watched I'm not this keeping before. track of it. You can go, you go anywhere. <laughs> I've enjoyed where you, where you, what you've been talking about. Tell me, uh, what stood out to you here? This is, this is pretty nuts back here, right? Yeah, it's nuts. I think um, two cars in particular, one being the best that I've seen so far is a yeah. DB5. There's oh, a baby blue. You see that? Yeah, oh, that, I mean, romantic. you can't really argue yeah. with that. No. And then the one that ironically is next to it, just because I own a different version, yeah. is the Model T. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. so okay. I own a 1923 Model T. Oh, wow. Yeah, so right. I'm just partial to that because I think it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit biased. But yeah, that yeah. one, it's just cool to see a Ford here in, yeah. uh, in Australia. Yeah, so fantastic. I think those two are great, but obviously the Kuwenta, I mean, there's like a thousand cars here that are amazing. So yeah. but that, when I saw the DB5, I was like, oh, that's, that's crazy. Um, tell me what you want to get out to the uh, car enthusiasts of Australia and the proud car owners. Is there a key message about ammo, the industry, anything you want to cover? Yeah, you I think, uh, listen, we're, we're very, very proud to be here. We're the first um, outside of the US place is here. Mm -hmm. uh, Stash Group is just an unbelievable group of people. And, and I, I, I don't know if I can express the moment of like, you know, like, you know, we just 
this is going to work and we'll figure it out versus yeah. like doing all the math. I just knew that this was the right fit. The energy was there. The energy was there. Mm -hmm. And then I think in terms of people watching it uh, from the enthusiast perspective, yeah. um, it's really about um, the therapeutic aspect of it. That's my, yeah. it's, not, it's, like a, it's like a purpose that I don't think I'll ever achieve in my career. Yes. And I'm hoping I can at least push people to be like, you know what, it's okay. And when I, people go, oh, hey, I'm a fan of the show, that kind of thing, yeah. and they're not detailers. Most of it is because, ironically, mm. it's not about the tips and tricks, that's helpful. Mm. It's like, you just you just gave me an excuse to go outside, I almost get like emotional. You, know, you give me an excuse to go outside after my long day of work, mm. and sometimes I take my kid with me, sometimes I don't, and I just need to chill. Mm. I work really hard on ABC car, pick a car, doesn't matter, Honda Civic mm. to a Ferrari, I don't care what car, it's irrelevant. Yes. But I just need to kind of, touch it and one guy I was talking to here he's like I watch your videos and I know I wash it I, I become and not in the goofy sense but more intimate with the car and the swoops and he's like I spent my entire life trying to get this car yeah. and now I get to wash it and feel it and whatever and I was like oh man and he's like no seriously and this is like an it's not a kid this is like an established guy with plenty of money it was a Ferrari yeah right. And he's like for you just kind of like unlocked it yeah. and so that's the message that I'm trying to like whatever if it's not ammo great use whatever product you want yeah. just in, get out there and enjoy the car that's the and purpose do, do some self therapy on your yeah, car yeah it's Absolutely. awesome cars are yeah. great yeah fantastic yeah. mate I, I think um, I think we've hit what we need to there apart from how people find you online super um, simple yep uh, ammonyc.com for the US version ammonyc.au for the Australian version yep. and then obviously ammo TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm not hidden well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you can find <laughs> me. You'll find me. Yeah, yeah. easy. Excellent, Larry. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time. We didn't awesome. even get a wind up. How did that not happen? You didn't get has, he, has he forgotten us? No, I think he's forgotten us. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. And Here you're about go. to hit the main stage and do a bit of a Yeah, stage, now so. I got to I gotta basically repeat all that. I gotta, <laughs> <laughs> nice. no, I'm doing a QA and down there. That's okay. on a projector. No, this is a blast. Excellent. Thanks so much, man. Again, really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed this. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for listening. We'd be grateful for your support with the like and subscribe. Cheers.